Ah, welcome to another video. My name's Graham and today I'm cycling on my e-bike down to my allotment plot so I can take a look at Polytunnel's greenhouses, the pros and cons of having either and the challenges that I've had so far three years into allotment gardening. So without further ado, let's dig in. she blows look at my e-bike it's literally one of the best things I've ever purchased gets me down to my allotment plot in about two minutes if I went straight here but I tend to go for a little cycle ride around the country roads before I come down here just to get out and get some fresh air this is the first time that you've clicked on one of my videos definitely hit subscribe because every week I do an allotment plot tour where I dive into the detail of what I'm growing. This is my third year of allotment gardening and things are really starting to go well this year. I feel like I'm just starting to learn what I'm doing and I'm having a lot of successes. It wasn't too long into my allotment gardening journey that I realised I wanted a polytunnel or a greenhouse because I wanted to grow some tomatoes, cucumbers and protect them and put them in a warmer space. So it made sense to get some sort of indoor gardening type of structure. First allotment plot, which is up there, I bought myself a polytunnel, a white polytunnel, and I'll put the link to that tunnel in the description. It was great, I only had it for one season because I took over this allotment plot. So I really wanna focus on these polytunnels because I kinda of know a lot more about them. Let's have a quick look at the polytunnels that I've purchased and I'll walk you through the challenges that I've had with them and the pros and cons so far. So I've got two polytunnels here. The link to them in the description. They're both exactly the same. And if I just show you the polytunnels from the front of the allotment plot, I've put them both parallel to each other at the back of the plot. I'll put the size of the polytunnels on the video now because I don't know what they are on the top of my head. This one's been up a lot longer than this one. Let's take a look at them and I'll show you around the polytunnels. One thing to note with these polytunnels, it's really important when you come to install them, that you dig them into the ground. I've had an issue with this polytunnel where I kind of bodged putting it together. And then we had some storms, not sure whether they were just before Christmas or around Christmas time just gone. And the whole thing lifted. I did a video on that. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. But yeah, it's really, really important that you dig the metal framing into the ground. I don't think the zips are going to last very long at all and I've had to be super careful when unzipping it because these zips are definitely going to go at some point. I mean, you do get bags and bags of room. I've put some planks of wood around the bottom of the polytunnel just to help support it really but it is pretty sturdy and it has handled quite a few storms this polytunnel. Got some great window vents which roll down there and have a bit of velcro there i kind of leave them open because i like to get some fresh air in the polytunnel but you've got those running all across the bottom here the polytunnel does get really warm in the summer and don't be surprised that the polytunnel actually gets quite warm in the winter as well when it's really cold outside you do notice such a big difference coming into the polytunnel in winter i think this was just under a hundred pounds like i say all the information's in the description to be exact it's around about a hundred pounds and i'm probably going to get another year out of this polytunnel and i'll show you what look how it's starting to perish against these metal poles i don't know if you can see very clearly on the video but all this is holes now this has all perished away. It's here, look. See how it's perished? And it seems to have perished wherever, I would say, wherever it's been rubbed up against stuff, but this hasn't been rubbed up against anything and it's still perished away. At the top, 
you've got some bits that are perishing away again seems to be where it's rubbing on the metal bars and in fact all the way along here it's starting to perish as well the advantage to having this polytunnel is it's fairly cheap in the sense that you get a couple of years of indoor growing out of it but it isn't going to last forever i think if you're a bit heavy handed you break those zips fairly early on you could build yourself a door to go on the front of it absolutely i did that on my old polytunnel and to be fair this doesn't get that much of a battery in where it is on the allotment plot it's quite surrounded by trees the wind does come in a little bit here but you're still getting perishing on the other side of the polytunnel so a negative about these polytunnels is Definitely after this year, I'm going to have to either buy a new cover or drastically tape it up with some sort of duct tape or insulating tape, which will look very strange. But I don't want to be too negative about this polytunnel because it may sound like I'm putting you off the idea of getting one. You can absolutely grow some fantastic stuff in here and you've got loads of space. I mean, I'm using sacks, but there's loads of different ways that you could grow in here running raised beds either side you could perhaps put some slabs down as a walkway everything i've grown in this polytunnel has been a success and if it hasn't been it's mainly down to me not knowing what i'm doing nothing to do with the polytunnel itself you can see the vents from the outside they roll up and then you just tie them in a knot to keep them up you put them down and then you've got this line of velcro there the difference in heat that you get in your polytunnel when you open or close these vents is unbelievable when i put this polytunnel up for months and months i couldn't understand it was literally about three or four degrees warmer in this polytunnel and it didn't really cotton on that it's because i had the vents closed when i opened it up it's pretty much the same temperature as that so if you do want to grow some stuff that needs a lot of warmth over the winter keep the vents down I don't want to home in on other people's allotment plots too much, but you can see that polytunnel there, for example. <laughs> what it is with guys, and they're over the top at sneezes. I do it myself sometimes. Feels great though. And I've been talking to the owner of that polytunnel and it's been there for years. I'm talking literally over 10 years and has never had an issue with it at all. Obviously he's installed it absolutely perfect but hasn't seen any sign of perishing or anything like that. Now tunnels like that I think are going to set you back between 700 and a thousand pounds by the time you've bought them. These are a hundred pounds so in terms of longevity or what sort of budget you got are you better to buy one of these get a couple of years out of it be done with it and keep replacing it or would you invest in a premium style polytunnel like that that's literally gonna it's gonna last you pretty much forever i reckon looking at my greenhouse though so i bought this greenhouse for an undisclosed sum of money from the previous allotment plot owner and this is an absolutely fantastic greenhouse one of these windows that opens and closes automatically when it gets too hot in there so when the sun shines down the window opens it's a really nice greenhouse it's got slabs i didn't lay the slabs the slabs are already there I have put in a couple of raised beds and i'm growing in sacks in here last year i did have a table that came with the greenhouse but i took it out because i felt like it was constricting the amount of space that i had in here i mean when you're talking greenhouses they are aesthetically more pleasing aren't they so the greenhouse itself, I think if you wanted to buy one of these greenhouses, it'd probably cost you a lot of money, 1200 quid or something like that. It does feel nicer in a greenhouse. Got to be honest with you, I don't feel particularly safe wandering around in greenhouses. You could easily trip. You see, and this might just be my mind overthinking things, but I think you could easily trip and fall through a greenhouse very easily a lot of stuff scattered around on the floor or you're not too good on your feet you could definitely have some sort of serious accident with a greenhouse so i think that's definitely something to bear in mind if you're thinking about purchasing a greenhouse and obviously putting it together 
I think we are all right pain in the ass. So let's do the little segment in the video where we uh, ask chat GPT what we think about polytunnels or greenhouses. So I'll just scan through this. So the advantages of getting a polytunnel, it says are cost effective. Yep, easy to install. Yep, flexible so you could move it around. I'm not certain you would move it around, but you could. And there's good ventilation. And I've already shown you those ventilation bits in the polytunnel. Disadvantages, durability, absolutely. Heat retention. So it says here, that a polytunnel may not retain as much heat as a greenhouse. I actually disagree with that. I think my polytunnels have got hotter in there than the greenhouse has. And aesthetics, it's typically considered less attractive than a traditional glass greenhouse. Fair enough. So let's talk about greenhouses quickly. Advantages, durability, they last longer. Heat retention, better at retaining heat. Mm, jury's out on that one. Aesthetics, yep control offers better control of environment conditions such as temperature and humidity suppose if you've got automatic windows open and closing the door yeah maybe maybe not i don't know disadvantages they're more expensive installation absolute nightmare ventilation may require additional equipment for proper ventilation so it says here in conclusion if you're looking for a cost-effective and flexible option, a polytunnel could be better for you. But if you're looking for a longer term and more aesthetically pleasing option, then a glass greenhouse, or it doesn't mention it here, but maybe a Perspex greenhouse. So in summary, what do I think? Well, if I could do this again, three years in, and I hadn't got anything, I hadn't got a greenhouse or these two polytunnels, I would buy a premium polytunnel I think I'd spend seven eight hundred pounds and I'll get myself a polytunnel that was going to last years and years and years the reason why I do that is installation and safety I just feel far more at ease with myself pottering around in a polytunnel than I do a greenhouse It'd be much easier to put up as well and the last point on that would be because you get far more space for your money in a premium polytunnel than you do in a premium greenhouse. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on polytunnels versus greenhouses and lessons that I've learned so far three years into allotment gardening. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Have you got a polytunnel? Do you love it? Have you got a greenhouse? Do you love it? Which do you think is better? And if you haven't purchased one and you're thinking of buying, what are you gonna go for? Either ways, whatever you choose, it's great having an indoor space to grow stuff. Ah. So for now, I'm gonna love you and leave you, and you'll find me fondling around in my cucumbers. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.